Are you ready for some girl chat? Yeah! Good. Always. Are you? Always. Okay. Yeah. First up, it's been a week since Donald Trump was elected president of the United States. And whether you're celebrating or mourning, it's important to take stock of the mood of the country right now. According to an article in Time, the Southern Poverty Law Center has counted over 200 incidents of harassment. This gets me emotional. I don't know. Sorry. Reported since the election. So the. Okay, I got that. For example, several students at a middle school in Royal Oak, Michigan, were caught on video chanting. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. I didn't mean to get this emotional. About it's this. okay. It, it's okay. You feeling what half of the country is feeling, Jeannie. Do not worry. The video <laughs> chanted build that wall during their lunch period, okay? Um, Monica. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. We got it. We got each other. Yeah. Also, officials at the University of Oregon are investigating an incident of students allegedly wearing blackface on campus and in New York City. Swastikas were drawn on several doors in a residence hall at a school where three Jewish women live, as well as on a sidewalk in a Brooklyn Jewish community. Now, at a time when our country should be trying to be unified, why do you think these incidents are happening so frequently, ladies? This is sad. It's devastating. It's really sad. It, it's frustrating. It's, yes, and I think it's just so sad because, you know, um, my parents left Vietnam because there was communism happening. They were judge being judged for their class. They were being judged just because they couldn't control the governmental conditions. So they fled to America because it, the one place in the entire world where every single person has a voice. And so, you know, I'm 37 years old and I've been so um, excited over every new election because it means a rebirth for our country. It means so many different things. I love fresh new voices in our White House because it just, it's new leaders. They're the only country where we have that sense of freedom. Yeah. And I've just never seen this type of reaction across America. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Jeannie. I've studied black history. I've got people in my family that know black history that have told me, you know, things that this has happened. This has been happening for a long time, okay? Yeah. And now America is getting a wake-up call. Yeah. It's getting a wake-up call that we need to uh, have a, a serious, not only a discussion, but we need to understand why this stuff is happening. And it's not right. I mean, you know, this is a democracy. And part of democracy is sometimes your candidate wins and sometimes your candidate loses. Right. So if you're on the part where the candidate is losing, you got to understand why and you try to mobilize. You know, protest is different than harassment. I want, in my opinion, yes. it's a big difference. Yes. So what's happening here is yeah, harassment. Is harassment yeah. That's not protesting. That's harassment. And this is the reason why we have a show like this that I'm very proud to be a part of so that we can have discussions like this, so that we can have experts come on and explain to people the difference between what is a harassment and what is a protest. Because right. these are harassments to people. We are all here in the United States of America, no matter what, and you should have the freedom to yeah. express yourself, but not in a harassing way. Yeah. Yeah. You should still be respectful to everyone. And I think that no matter what happens, you can disagree with people, you can have different beliefs. Uh, you shouldn't disrespect people. And I think it's incredibly disrespectful to draw swastikas. It is incredibly disrespectful right. to chant, build the wall. Granted, it becomes difficult when you have a president who makes it okay to do things like that or empowers people to think that that is okay to say or do with the build the wall situation. I don't think right. he's walked around drawing swastikas anywhere, but, <laughs> but for the build the wall thing, I think um, that has to be so hurtful. If you're a Latino or a Mexican in that school, how that must make you feel must be right. awful. Right. So well, you know, in a recent, I'm gonna tell you something. In a recent 60 Minutes interview, when asked about reports of racial slurs and personal threats against African Americans, Latinos, and gays by some of his supporters, Trump said he was saddened to hear about that and that they should stop it because he wants to bring the country together. And now, this is, this is why. Yeah, I applaud that. You have course. to applaud, yeah. you know, that. It's, you guys. Okay. Well, Lonnie, and I have to say, 
that call myself an optimist, mm -hmm. whether you know you like it or not. But don't say me. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying in general. I want to believe that we have more good people in this country than bad. However, it's now time for us good people to not be silenced. Yeah. We have to yeah. stand up for what's right and help our brothers and sisters. Absolutely. I don't want us to be divided yeah, because of all of this stuff anything. that's happening. Now, more than ever, it's time for us to unite. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And you know, I feel like this election has also given way to a lot that was already there, clearly, mm -hmm. but it was hidden. So what this election has done has made people that are comfortable with racism and things of that nature, who initially felt like, okay, I'll keep that to myself yeah. or amongst my core group. Exactly. It has now become widespread yeah. and accepted. Mm -hmm. And I think that through these types of conversations and these, um, the recognition that there is a problem, that means that we must unify. We can no yes. longer ignore what has to be done. Mm -hmm. We must unify because now people that have never used the term minority have realized they are one. Right, right. And for wow. so long, a lot of people that were part of the minority, myself included, um, a lot of times we knew, we grew up understanding mm -hmm. having a grandmother raised in Noonan, Georgia. Okay, it's not, tell it. Yeah. It got really real and stayed that way for a long time. We're having children now that can go to a school where my mother was not allowed to use their water fountain. Mm -hmm. You realize that some change has happened, but not yet enough. Right. And you have these amazing groups of people that haven't had a reason to speak. Mm -hmm. Now we all got a reason to speak. Exactly. Right. Because when you, exactly. when you don't, um, I tell my kids this, if you don't contribute to the solution, you're a part of the problem. Mm -hmm. That is in that. silence as well. And I really want to commend Mr. Trump for saying those words when the world needs to hear it more than ever. Stop. We need to hear a leader that is making the people feel protected and safe. That's the number one quality that I look forward to in my president, whoever who it may be. And I really do believe, and, and I pray, that Mr. Trump is hearing not just his own voice, because I think we know he's such a confident person because he hears his voice most, which is strong in some areas. But right now, I hope that God is shifting him so he's hearing the voices of America. Right. Yeah. The people. Yeah. Well, the people. I mean, we hope, but yeah. I just want to talk about the people, though, yeah. you know? And there are many people who want to speak out in protest. So they've started wearing the safety pins to quietly announce themselves as friends to minorities who feel the threatened by the election result. I love this. The pins indicate they're safe among the person wearing it and that they stand by them. Now, even celebrities like Patrick Stewart, I love him, he's love posted him. a picture wearing the pin to show his support, you know? I think that's awesome. I think that's really, really awesome that people are standing up and saying, look, I stand with you. Mm -hmm. and, and guys, it doesn't have to be that you are one of the minorities, by the way. I think there's nothing more beautiful than being like, oh, I'm not affected by that, but I still care. Right. Absolutely. Like, it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. that, oh, this, this affects my home or my children, but that, let's say, if Asians were being attacked or something, I would stand with you just because I care. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? I, I'll say this, too. I think the good people that you were talking about, they're the frustrated good people. Mm. They're the people that feel like no matter what they do, change is not happening. It's mm. not happening the way that they want it to. It's not happening for a lot of them, they feel period. So I think the frustration stopped them from getting to the ballots, which in turn hurt them more. Yeah. But the feeling at yeah. the time was that I'm not going. The driver that drove me here said, I don't vote. Well, you know, I don't do that. What's really funny, though, too, even it's been reported, even Donald Trump said, I didn't think I'd make it past October 2015. He didn't know. <laughs> you know, and so that's why I think I always have takeaways. I think you have to be careful about what you're doing. This is not a game. This yeah. is the world now. Right. So you have to be very, very careful. You have to take people seriously. You know, this is not a reality show. This ain't, this ain't a TV show. We can edit. You can edit what I say. Right. But now, this is, this real is the, life. This the real yeah. test. And you know what? It was funny because when he met with President Obama, you see how he got humble, okay? Because President Obama told him some stuff. It was like...
Uh oh. Yeah, you know, it was a different feel, right? Because right? they thought, because different... you know, the news media was saying, oh, it, they all, all, they'll probably only meet for like 15 minutes. No, they met for an hour and a half. Let me tell you something about President Obama, because I've sat in a meeting with him. He is a serious <laughs> man. He talks about things, and he probably told Trump some things. And Trump, like, he came, walked out of that meeting, sat there with his hands, and he was like, Obama's a good man. Like, that's all I need to hear. Yeah. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> But that's, I would feel so frustrated hearing that after, I mean, not even, but like if, if you go an entire, you know, election period saying opposite and then you come out and say that, I'd be like, boo, which one is it? Well, what yes, I'm but we can change. And, and just it, like us, you saying. guys, even us here, at the, I'm using this as an example, but we didn't think or we would always have dreamed for a talk show, I'm sure. But we didn't think or expect for it to happen on the date that it did when God blessed us with this opportunity. Correct. And the day that we got called and said, we have a talk show, immediately, I'm sure, you had a discussion with yourself of realizing Adrian, Tamara, Lonnie, Monica, your voice is going to be heard and judged yeah. and criticized yeah. and, and processed by millions of people. So it stepped you up to an occasion to be a little bit more mindful about your role now in the world. I pray that for Melania and Donald Trump. Yeah. To be more mindful. And yeah. I do believe that people can change. Yeah. And I do think, and I'm gonna keep saying it, this is a democracy. If you protest, peacefully protest. Yes, okay? Please. And stop harassing yes. you other people. So yes. that's respect what I'm gonna everybody. Say. Yes. Respect everyone.